Hi guys, Kamal's here. Welcome to our vlog or vlog or anything you can call it. I hope you guys are doing well. So basically, today my group need to present or talk about one therapy or one alternative medicine. So for the topic, we are going to talk about speech therapy. Do you guys know what is speech therapy? No? Good. At least we have reason to explain it today. In this video, me and all my friends in my team, Aini, Intan and Hakima will explain to you guys and will categorize the topic to few subtopics. But don't worry, we will tell all that one by one since we need to explain this in 15 minutes time. So please, please stay with us for 15 minutes, okay? I can assure that this knowledge will be very, very, very beneficial for you guys and people around you. So let's go! Have you ever wondered what is speech therapy is all about? Let me tell you what is it. Speech therapy is the assessment and treatment of communication problems and speech disorders. It is performed by speech language pathologists (SLPs), which are mostly referred to as speech therapists. Speech therapy techniques are used to improve communication, and this include articulation therapy, language intervention therapy activities, and others, which depends on the type of speech or language disorder. So next section is we talk about how speech therapy is different from adult and children. So therapy is a positive and effective tool for patients of all ages, whether identified as a need in infant and toddler stages, as teen or young adult, or even a mature adult and one moving into senior years of life. Speech therapy services can provide life-changing benefits so have you ever wondered how speech therapy uh, is different depending on ages, especially between adults and kids? So recognizing the need for therapy services will be different between adults and children, as the common signs and symptoms may be vary to each other. While children are normally identified for treatment during their growth and development, for an adult, an evaluation and diagnosis may follow an illness or injury or become necessary to the effect due to aging uh, such as Parkinson disease or oral cancer that has caused swallowing difficulties. So when it comes to actual therapy treatment themselves, the underlying issue requiring services may be similar but the technique and the goals will be personalized based on patient current life needs. So for example, Children and adults may both uh, struggle with focus and attention. Children will work on sitting still and complete, completing uh, simple games or puzzles in a single sitting. The activities include language activities such as lying and talking with the child using pictures, books and objects to stimulate language development. Next is articulation. Articulation activity help them uh, with their pronunciation. Uh, while for adult, adult will practice organization and planning skill, such as uh, learn how to break large tasks into smaller components using several different techniques, such as breathing, mouth, and swallowing exercise. Another example will be uh, swallowing and feeding. Patients of all ages may need to learn or relearn how to manipulate lips, jaw, and also tongue to successfully swallow food. But the techniques, uh, explanation, and practice session will be different between children and adults. So Norani Ashikin will explain how speech therapy exercise will be different from adults and children. Okay, hi, my name is Norani. So now uh, we will continue. I will show you what actually happened during the speech therapy. Okay, firstly, we will see for adult. For adult, uh, like I already mentioned by Amira, 
the the exercises will be based on the evaluation and the diagnosis. For example, if the patient have an illness or injury that cause, uh, for example, swallowing difficulties, so the exercises will be to improve the patient swallowing. Uh, for example, tongue exercise, jaw thrust. Okay, so without wasting our time, let's see an example of a patient diagnosed with stroke having his speech therapy. So after a stroke, it is common for people to have cognitive difficulties, including changes in attention and concentration, short-term memory, problem-solving, planning and organization skills, and reasoning skills. So the patient in this video, Joe, is completing a course of speech therapy to improve these skills. The therapist prepared an iPad and showed him an application that was going to practice his visual attention. So what it's going to do is, it's going to give him either a symbol or a letter and what he has to do is to touch each one of the indicated symbols or letters as quickly and efficiently as he can. But at the same time, you know, maintaining a pace that is going to work for you. Okay, okay so we'll start with the practice. All right, and we'll start with, we'll start with similar letters and then we can always switch it up. Okay, so it's touch each target in order from left to right, top to bottom. So essentially the same way you'd read a book. Okay, all right. So now we have every I and H, okay? This actually helped me find it if I miss one on that line. Yes, exactly. Oh. Explains to you how many seconds it took, mm -hmm. how many targets there were, and what percentage you found on the first try. Okay. So that's what is nice about this app because it records everything for you. So it kind of takes some of the work out and it gives you, you know, that objective measure. So we could say, you know, today, Joe, you did. 88%. I like this Next one. week, you do 95%, you know, so it gives you that concrete evidence. Okay, uh, next we will see an example of a child who has apraxia of speech, having his speech therapy. And the therapist prepares her a wonderful exercises with beginning sounds. Here we go. Apple, apple, a, a, a. Apple, apple. Apraxia of speech symptoms can be the child may have may have difficulty in saying long and complex words and they may tend to repeat um, the pronunciation of the words but with consistent attendance to the SLP who are experienced the apraxia may be cured. Okay. Did you guys know that actually we can do speech therapy at home? Actually, there are many techniques that we can do self-speech therapy. For example, for example, for children, for, for children, you can try to read to your child because reading is a very is a wonderful way to develop their speech and language skills. And if they are uh, old enough to read, you can let them read back to you. Or if they are too young to read the words, you can let them explain the pictures to you or let them let them point to, to the pictures that you name it. Okay. And then, uh, secondly, you can try to play with your children, playing, for example, board games that have like guessing objects or describing objects, asking questions that can expand their language and also speech skills. Also, be attentive and patient. If your child has a speech disorder, it is, it is important to be patient. You cannot let them push the words out. You can see to your child, take your time, 
take your time i'm listening it's okay then give your undivided attention when they communicate with you next for adult uh, home exercises are very easy to do and it can accelerate your therapy process and my friend will show and demonstrate to you the exercises that you can do first you can try tongue exercises stick your tongue out hold for two seconds then bring it back in repeat this process for several times you can also try this same exercise but move your tongue to each corner of your mouth for 2 seconds. And finally, move your tongue up and down in the same fashion. These exercises help train your tongue to move in coordinated patterns. Next, smiling. Simply smiling in front of a mirror can help improve motor skills. Smile, relax. And then smile again. Repeat this process for several times. Next, puckering your lips. Try puckering your lips and then relaxing. Repeat this several times. This can help you control the movement of your mouth. And lastly, reading out loud. If your speech disorder prevents you from moving your mouth and tongue properly, reading out loud can be excellent practice. Start out with a few small sentences and work your way up from there. He was an old man who fished alone in a skiff in a gulf stream and he had gone 84 days now without taking a fish. And now, I'll be continuing to tackle why we need speech therapy or the very least need to be evaluated by a speech therapist. Um, I think it will not be a bad idea now if you consider that the scope of speech therapist is quite wide. And your, loved, and your child or your loved one may need to see a speech therapist for a variety of reasons. Speech, language, communication, and swallowing difficulties could happen to anybody at any age level. And um, commonly, children with Down syndrome, cerebral palsy, learning difficulty, hearing impaired, cleft palate, and autism spectrum disorder will have speech, language, or communication problems. And we can't really predict a voice disorder even it can happen uh, as the child matures but there are some other difficulties that you can almost predict which might necessitate uh, your child uh, evaluated or assessed by a speech therapist and this also can happen from birth so um, that could be a red flag or or telltale sign of any developmental issues or acquired issues that could happen from birth. So, research advocate for early intervention which is remediating any difficulties as soon as they appear. And preferably when the child is 3 years and below or at the earliest discovery of an issue. Now, I have to say that um, in Malaysia, particularly birth trauma is quite prevalent. And there's a number of, uh, and there's a number of children whose issues or whose communication disorder or developmental issue were as a result of birth trauma. So, what is birth trauma? Birth trauma is a general term describing any injury to a newborn that is as a result of birth process. These include eventualities of prolonged or obstructed labor, premature birth, fatal distress in utero, or as a result of the birth process. Whereas for adults, they could acquire speech language communication or swallowing problems due to stroke, brain injury, and aging process. 
the need for a speech repetition can be different from each person and this depends on the potential and motivation of the patient and family towards the therapy program. Speech therapy would be most effective for children under 3 years and for adults if the condition was there from the beginning. So, um, I hope that's made it clear why do we need speech therapy from the very earliest on stage or time in your child's life or your loved one that will give you an indication as uh, whether their needs will benefit from speech therapy. Okay, after all this explanation about what is speech therapy, what speech therapists do, but who is actually speech therapist or how to be like them? It's okay, let me explain. Speech language pathologists or SLPs, often called as speech therapists, are educated in the study of human communication, its development, and its disorders. SLPs' jobs are to assess the speech, the language, the cognitive communication, and oral feeding and swallowing skills. Even the swallowing and feeding is not a part of speech, but that is one of the job scope of speech therapists. This lets them identify a problem and the best way to overcome it or the best way to treat it. To be SLPs, you must at least have a at least a master's degree, take certificate or license in the field, and a certificate of clinical competency from American Speech Language Hearing Association or ASHA. Yes, even though in Malaysia, we need to have the American Speech Language Hearing Association certificate. An ASHA certified SLP has passed a national exam and completed ASHA accredited supervised clinical fellowship. Sometimes, speech assistants help give speech language services. They usually have two years associates or four years bachelor's degrees and are supervised by a certified SLP. We always only thought that, huh? Speech only must not very hard code. But little did we know that it is definitely not easy to be a speech therapist. You must have a master degree and you need to be certified to be one. It's not an easy job, guys. Let's appreciate speech therapists more after this, okay? Alright, so basically, that is all about the snippets about what is speech therapy. We learn about the definition, about the differences, about the process, is it effective or not, and, and about the speech therapists themselves. Actually, this is also is very, very new for us too. But we guys hope that you guys learn new knowledge today. If you guys can see there is speech problems in people around you, now you can take action. Take the first action guys. Don't forget to like, comment and subscribe our video, okay? No, just kidding. This is just for the assignment. Thank you for watching guys. Bye.